about the politics of a film production? The politics? Which part? <laughs> exactly. Uh, Just, okay, so... Act, the, not to sit in the director's chair. No, to, no. Like, the, so, like, the politics of, of, the, of a set, okay? And then each department has their own hierarchy of politics. So the DP... With the first, the assistant camera and and then and then there's the light, the gaffer and the lighting department yeah. and and yeah. and then the key grips and the and dolly grip and all these kind of things, but as the thing that people don't understand, at least from my experience, is that there is a lot of politics going on. Absolutely. A lot of a, a lot of times, people have different uh, end games mm. uh, involved. So I've always told people, I'm like, whoever you hire as your DP, make sure that they're there for the story and not for their reel. Because they will, they will bust their balls to get that crane to get this nice long 20-second crane shot that will never make the edit. You're going to use two seconds of it, but they want it for their reel. Yep. So, and, 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 you're, and you've burned four hours because they're lighting it like it's a Scorsese film. And twenty grand to get the crane and all the permits to and all yeah, the setup. Yeah, all that stuff. So, it's but it. but as a young filmmaker, you don't know any better, so you really right. need to understand. So that's one set of politics. Then there's the power struggle, where if you have a young director on set, which I've been the young director on set, of not, oh, not as much anymore, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I was the young director on set, where then the script soup was sent in by the producer to test me and push me to see if I had the metal to actually hold the production together. Right. And because they didn't know who I was or what I had done prior, I'd already done commercials and music videos and other things like that before I got on a narrative film set. Sure. And, the, and this, this is before IMDb, this is before the internet, so a lot of people didn't know, they, you could check up your work, they just heard. Right. So they, they needed the test. So that's that kind of politics you have. And then sometimes there's like spies from the production that come in to see if you're directing right. Or they're spies from the head of your department. They're like, hey, uh, here the, you're the, you're the, head, the head camera guy. Keep an eye on, on Joe there. See how Joe's doing. And you never know that you're being watched. So there's yeah. the, all these kind of things. You can touch a little bit. About, I, I've touched on a bunch of it. Can you touch a little bit or add to that? Well, you know, I, I could take up two hours doing that. I mean, that's an interesting, that's an interesting, the politics and the dynamics on a set are unbelievable. I mean, I kind of, I mean, I work with a lot of the same people now. I try to have a, a loyal crew that I enjoy working with. But yeah, there's times where I'm a work for hire. I got to bring in other people and you I try to keep those things. I, I, you know, the one thing I always do with a DP if I'm hiring one is I say, look, this isn't about your reel. It's about the overall. When I look at a new DP, I don't want to see his reel. I call directors and editors he's worked with and say, send me raw dailies. I don't want to see his reel because, you know, I'll ask a director or an AD, did this DP, were you guys ever held up because he was slow setting up? Did you guys need 10, 15, 20 takes because of camera or did you do five or six takes and everything was great and it was more a director's choice? I like to find those things out. I, I always let people know this isn't about you. It's about us. That way they don't feel alienated, but it's more a team effort. And I always tell them up front, you're not getting anything for your reel until the movie's out. And that can be anywhere between a year and a half and three years. So mm -hmm. suck it up. You're here to make a movie. Um, but there are dynamics. I, you know, I was taught very young, Alex, that uh, anybody who's a cameraman wants to be a cinematographer. If they're a cinematographer, they want to be a director. If they're a this, they want first, to be a that. If you're a first AD, a lot of times they want to be the director. <laughs> they want to be a director too. So I, I remember that going in. And, and, and to me, again, I always – found that's probably why I don't hire ADs when I make movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a, a, there's politics, there's dynamics um, on a set. I feel, you know, I learned from Jeff McGuire, who is a, a tremendous writer. He wrote Gridiron Gang. He got an Oscar nomination for In the Line of Fire with Clint Eastwood. Jeff taught me something 30 years ago. He said, just remember something in this business, no matter what, no matter how kind somebody is being or how, accommodating they may seem to you they are doing it for their own gain don't ever forget that because you'll make a lot of great friends in this industry but he said just remember everybody's got a purpose for what they do and is it true or not i think it's more true than untrue but i just think it's it's about working with people that you can trust and making sure everybody's on the same page and i think if people feel comfortable like we talked about earlier if they feel from the, the top down, it's like we look at what's going on in our country and people can say, why is things happening the way they're happening? Well, you look at the top and how people are behaving coming down. Oh, well, it's happening up there. It must be okay to treat somebody this way. 
I think if you can, I think you can, you know, lead with a soft voice and a big stick or whatever the term is. I think people, the respect and, and the backbiting and the conniving on a setter, they become a lot more minimal. I agree. Least, and if that's what I, from my experience too, if you cast the crew, appropriately yes. it's casting the crew you cast those personalities to see if it, it's all in because if you have one toxic person especially oh. if they're a department head it's tough because i mean i've had a boom guy who was toxic and it just brings the whole set down until i had to call i had to go over and like get another guy here tomorrow because i'm not going to work with this guy he's just he, he's just yeah. toxic his attitude his energy was heavy everything was just right. rough and it's just too damn stressful making a movie is a stressful scenario it's hard enough. We don't need bad apples to use a generic term. And, you know, it's funny when you said that, it reminded me of something. I was on a film a couple of films ago, and it was weird. I, I always do a SAG after a film with a non-IA crew. That's just how I work. Some of my guys are IA guys. They, they, they want to come work for me. That's fine. That's their right. I love having them. But we don't have union rules. Well, what are those rules? Well, we don't pay the union rates. We still have the days are the same length. We still pay overtime. We're still you know, feeding them, feeding them breaks. Feed yeah. them very well. We overfeed. And there are just some things like, hey, you know what, guys, I need grace. We need to get two more takes of this. Are we all good? Everybody good? You know, ask for grace. And then you get that one guy who's part of a union that shows up one day that's just angry, bitter, trying to tell everybody, let's turn the show and all that. Oh, it's like, God. come on, dude. Our budget's 400 grand. Do you really want to turn the show? You know, I've been I've been involved with productions who who had their shows turned and for everybody listening if you if you don't know what turning a show is or flipping a show okay. is yeah when a when you're in a non-union shoot and you've got union guys working on it and I, the film I was working on uh, I was doing post on they actually were 50 they were outside the circle they were outside the 50 mile circle so they were they were they were quote unquote okay they had some union guys but there was this one guy one assistant camera who wanted to be part of the union and he yep. made a phone call and the next day the union was there and they and they shut down the production and they had to flip the production and because of that one dude that film sat in my hard drive yeah. for a year because they had yeah. to they had to raise another like you know another few hundred thousand dollars to finish the film and it was all because this guy flipped the film so that's this was one of your productions. No, I was, I was, I was just working post. Got it, got it, got it. I was okay. just working. I was, so, I was just. Unacceptable. What I do is I have an understanding of where budgets need to be to not get flipped. I mean, if your budget is a certain amount, they're going to leave you alone. If you start treading in areas that you risk, go ahead. Well, no, the thing was that our project, uh, that project I was working on, was a low budget project, but it had two high profile stars. Ah, well. Yeah, I mean, some, I guess anything's possible. It's just, um, you know, what I always, I always try. I don't, I don't subscribe to the theory uh, permission uh, or forgiveness is easier to get than permission when it comes to filmmaking. I always try to nip the bud. Like when I set up to do my independent stuff with visual arts entertainment, I called the head of the IA. I just, I called them, got to the head of the IA, introduced myself. This is what I'm doing. I've got three films I'm doing. These are the budgets. I need to know that I'm not going to have a problem. He goes, you called me. You're telling me your budget, your budget. I believe you. I told him where we were shooting. We're way out of the, TM, you know, the zone. And he said, dude, I will keep a note of all of this stuff. You will not hear from us. And guess what? In a four and a half year period making those films, we didn't have one guy. Not a problem. At all. It was, it all is relative to, um, <clears throat> the production because I was on another project that was a million dollar production a million dollar production had Oscar in Florida had Oscar winning ask Oscar nominated actors in it like big actors IATSE showed up they didn't know what the budget was yeah. uh, they, IATSE showed up and they were shooting on a Panasonic DVX 100A a million dollar production don't ask me why on that camera on that camera they were shooting. This is this is back in the 90s. Uh, this is actually early 2000s. I had the VX2000, I remember. Yeah, it was amazing. It was an amazing camera. And yeah, they said, right. oh, oh, sorry. We didn't, sorry. They just walked away because they said, oh, there's no money here. Okay, great. But what they, if they, if you haven't had that conversation and they see a big star, they're going to flip. They're going to, they're going to, you're going to have problems. I agree with you 100%.